How you doing, guys? My name is Chrome, and this is Prospect Magazine TV. We have a hell of a guest today. I, I don't believe it. I can't. I don't even believe these men even had time to talk to talk to me. They are my mentors. I've been reading their books. I've been studying their history, and it is so amazing because I met these guys about 25 years ago in um, in, in in Laughlin, uh, Nevada, at uh, the River Run thing. And uh, it was fascinating to meet them. You know, these guys showed up in, in Las Vegas, in Vegas and in Nevada, and they had like an aura around them. And I had to see who they were. Who, who they were. You know, five years after that, I, I worked on a documentary film with some people and I met them again. It was just amazing to meet these men, these great men. Today, we got uh, two original members of the East Bay Dragons Motorcycle Club out of Oakland, California. They started around 1959 in the late great Toby Jean Livingston is the man who started it all and put it all together. And it's just a beautiful thing to see these men. They are the prototype of motorcycle club culture, black motorcycle club culture. And I wanted to bring them on today and um, introduce them to the world, to the youngsters who don't know anything about them. You know, I always said that if you don't know who the Dragons is and you got an MC in your back, you don't know what the hell you're doing because that's just like trying to play guitar. You don't know who Jimi Hendrix is. It's almost the same thing. Actually, it is the same thing. Without further ado, I'm going to bring on um, Willie Harper and Paul Butler. They're two of the original members of the East Bay Dragons Motorcycle Club. And we're going to chop it up a little bit, go through some history and uh, find out why they started. You know, I know they were a car club first and then they turned into the MC world. But, you know, we're going to talk. We, I'll let them explain to you and give you a little bit of history. Uh, you know, and we're going to talk about past, present, and the future of Black motorcycle clubs in America and where is it going? Because these men have been around for 61 years, and that's a long, long time. And they're headed together. I see clubs, you know, they don't make it for two weeks. And these men, they got some formula that maybe they want to share with all of us, and that'd be amazing. So let's just let's bring them on. Gentlemen, how you doing? Uh, good. Hey, let doing me, good. Let me change that screen here. Yeah, yeah. So we got Paul Butler here and uh, and uh, Willie Hopper, which is his, his name. His biker name is Paul Hop. I love that name. And yeah. <laughs> I love that name. And and tell me a little bit. You know, in 1959. Are you you two guys are two of the original members of the East Bay Dragons MC? Not me. Not me either. I'm not original either. My my brother was. Okay. My brother, but, but he he passed. Uh, well, he passed. Almost around the same time as Toby Jean did. Mm. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah. In 1959, I was in a club called the uh, uh, Fender Benders. Okay. Down in, down in West Oakland. Okay. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't ride motorcycles. It was a car club. During the same time, the East Bay Dragons had to, they had a car club then. During that time, it was a lot of car clubs, Wicked Sticks, Broham Cruises. All these guys had car clubs here. <clears throat> and so uh, later on, uh, the East Bay Dragons, uh, they ended. They started riding motorcycles. Okay. I think in the sixties. In the sixties, and uh, a few years after that, after they started riding motorcycles, then I came out to join. I came to join the club with a with a Honda one fifty, <laughs> and they rode that Honda man all up down the street. And they told me when I get a Harley Davidson, I can come back and get in the club. You know, so <laughs> I was ready to get in, man. I had to cook a leather jacket and cut the sleeve off, and I had like. A roller derby helmet on, and you know, I came out there and I looked at their bikes and everything they had painted chrome. Everything was chrome. I painted mine silver. I was ready to get in the dragon, man. I come to get in the dragon. So the guy said, the guy said, oh, this guy here coming to get in the club with a swing with a motor on it. <laughs> and they all took turns riding the bike up and down the street. So that started me. That 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 kind of pushed me into really riding a motorcycle, you know. So so it's really go ahead. I got hurt. I got hurt on it. Uh, I went down on that little bike clowning one day, and there was an old guy named uh, Vallejo Brown. He rode a chop all the time. And, uh, and he, he always come to the pool hall, and I used to meet him at the pool, talk, pool hall. After I went down, he asked me, he said, yeah, I heard you went down on your little bike. I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, you should have had a Harley Davidson. You wouldn't have went down on a Harley Davidson. So, so, Paul, I got to ask you a question. So, when I was, when I, about 20 something years ago, the first time I saw you guys, I saw some of your members at Laughlin and um, the, the River Run up there. And the one thing I, it was stuck out to me with all the clubs I've been, you guys had really pristine bikes. So, how does that go? Do you have a guy that somebody in your club, every bike I saw was better than the next one? Do you have a guy that, that says, you know, is there like somebody in your a captain says, your bike got to look like this to join your club? How does that go? No, it ain't nothing like that, actually, because 
I've had a stock motorcycle the whole time I've been there. I, I got it in 73. And I've had I've had four bikes. They all stopped. Right, but, I've, I've had five during the time I've been there, and they were all stopped. I what mean, I'm I saying is to... they look custom. What it is is this. When I, when, I, when I visited you guys last year, and one thing I noticed about your bikes, and I've visited a lot of clubs, that you guys have the most traditional, beautiful motorcycle club, motorcycles I've ever seen. I think yeah. some guys go overboard with it. Whatever they got to do, they started looking like Santa Claus sleds. But yeah. one thing I noticed about your bikes, and when we came back to Canada, and my whole club, we sat down, we had a conversation about that. And we said, he goes, the dude said, I really like the bikes, man. It's like, it's not overboard. They're just <laughs> traditional, very clean, just like yeah. no, no bells and whistles, just done. Is somebody in charge of that? Because when I came back and did, I made somebody in charge of that year. I oh, said, wow. We, 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 dude, we follow everything you guys do. We made somebody in charge. Goes, okay, anybody shows up with those baggers where they're looking like a Santa Claus sled, they're going to get something else. Oh. <laughs> you know, I think, I think what really uh, prompted us our bike, the way we uh, fashion our bikes. You know, we had a lot of dealing with uh, Arlen Ness. Right. I know you remember Arlen Ness. Yes, yes. We had it coming up, you know, before he got famous, you know, he used to do uh, paint our bikes. We had a Harry guy named Harry Brown, Harry guy like uh, Bobby Driscoll. Uh, Bobby Driscoll did metal, metal, a lot of metal stuff. He made handlebars and foot pegs and stuff. So we was able to get the latest stuff that those guys was making we made us stand out when we get around other people because we, we was we was cool with those guys, you know, all the guys did the fresh painting and all that stuff, you know, so that made it stand out. So, with, so the thing is, wait, let's talk about all these clubs in 1959. It was you guys and the LA Defiant ones. You counted the two oldest clubs in California at that time? There actually were no, some other really. clubs. No, no, no. There were some other clubs and, and, and a, a few of them are still, still around, but they're, you know, not yeah. quite doing that well. Not, not, go ahead. Yeah, this, a couple of, we're over in San Francisco. Yeah, Rattlers. Yeah, yeah the Rattlers. Mm -hmm. So they 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 actually they actually started for us, but they just yeah. kind of kind of fizzled out though. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, this is hard to keep up this whole motorcycle thing, you know. You guys yeah. are in the fifties, and guys get older and they pass away. That you know, well, that's, true. that's a reality. That's true. Yeah, I, I think the big thing with uh, with why everybody, a lot of guys' bikes look so good is. Most guys get it and they want to personalize it and make it yeah. the way they want it. And uh, like me, I'm just satisfied to go to the shop, buy it exactly the way I want it. And I'll, yeah. I try to leave it that way. But the average guy, <laughs> he gets it. He wants, he just wants to make it, you know, more like him. Personal. Like my, my bike's sitting right behind the screen. Right. And I got two nines for foot pegs. Pistols, wow. two nine, nine, nine millimeters for, for foot pegs, you know, for my real foot pegs. And, and a lot of people trip off of that, you know. So, I, as soon as I got my bike, I started changing up, putting stuff on it. I started doing the little, little, little things, you know, that would stand out with other people. Say, wait, where'd you get that? That's that's sort of like being like the mad scientist in the garage, and he see this, he tap on that. So, oh, that'll look good on that, you know. So, you made it your own. But I got a question to ask you guys. So, you know, it's funny. I had to do some research, and I have a producer who's helping me all this. And when she when she did, when she was, uh, you know looking at some stuff and she's and we googled you and it came up that you guys an outlaw club yeah. are, are you an outlaw club or are you just an no. outlaw by default like everybody else the the <laughs> problem is is people don't really understand the definition the original definition of an outlaw club yeah, that was that a million times. Club. please please explain that yeah <laughs> explain it, we, we, we're not we're not one percenters we well, don't we don't deal with yeah. that stuff but I, uh, our love club is the one the guys go around breaking the law and going to the little towns and tearing the town up and doing all that. Right. Our club is more like a brotherhood. Yeah. It's a home away from home and, and a bunch of guys that like to. Years ago, we started putting these bikes together. We rode chops, so we we would go to each other's houses. You know, if I build my bike and I had extra parts, then you can ready to build yours. You come get my extra parts and the parts you have left over, then you put them aside, chrome for the next guy. So that that you know that. that that's all like drew us together, you know, like. Yeah, we, we I understand that. So Paul, explain, explain what the All Club is. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, uh, the original, uh, I guess, definition of an outlaw club Marlon Brando. was anybody that wasn't part of the AMA. Thank you. 
That's how we got to be okay. outlaw club. Because not because of some activities that you're doing, exactly. but because you were not a part of the AMA. In, in the AMA, in that, until 1975, did not allow, did not black clubs, period. So all black clubs who wore patches were outlaw clubs. Outlaw clubs, right. Exactly. Yeah. And I that's nothing to do with being an outlaw. Wow, so I, <laughs> I, I, I learned something today then, yeah. So, 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 so what I'm saying is yeah. different. <laughs> Different between a black outlaw club and a white outlaw club is totally different. Yeah. Because the AMA didn't like black clubs, the American Motorcycle Association. Yeah. Okay. So all black clubs were outlaws if they started up in the 60s and That's the 50s. It. Thank yeah. you. That's it. Because I had a conversation with one of the booze fighters and I explained it to him. He says, You know what? You're right. Because we get called an outlaw club in Canada, because I'm going to tell you why. Because back in the day, in the 60s, White clubs and law enforcement didn't want to acknowledge black clubs all across America. So you considered an outlaw. So I, was, I had an outlaws visit us, and he said, you know you guys are an outlaw club. I go, well, what are you talking about? He goes, how do you, white clubs feel about you? He said, they don't want us here. How do the cops feel about it? They don't want us here. That's what you're doing. And you did it anyway. Yeah. I go, well, I guess. <laughs> oh, wow. But anyway, Paul, I'm so glad you you being a veteran at this and explain that, because there's so many people don't really understand the definition of an no. outlaw. We really don't. You know, really black don't. men, we got enough problems as it is, and, and bikes are dangerous. So, you know, us want to be criminals or whatever the hell you want to you want to call it doesn't really make any sense because we've been targeting them back anyway, just being black men riding these motorcycles and having fun. You know, we can yeah, say everybody think you're crazy. You, you think you're crazy. And you know, and I, I talked to law enforcement on all sorts of levels about all this. And because I had a friend of mine that he's in homeland security, he's a federal agent. And he said, why do you want to do this? And I said, well, I got a bunch of guys here looking for family. This is all we're doing. And, and we just like the Americans, what they're doing. So we're going to put MC on that back. I'm sorry. He's like, you want to say, we're going to do this. And he goes, well, you know, I know you and I know how you guys are. Do your thing. And I'll make sure you guys have a safe path through all this. Now, you know, you know, you know, I, I, I pulled up some notes about you guys and we talked about a lot of things. I was really impressed when I was in, when I was in Oakland and I'm going to tell you guys a little story that you probably don't even know. I was in Oakland 20 years ago and coming to your clubhouse and I got lost in Oakland. I'm with a bunch of film students. We got lost. So we pulled over and we walked into a McDonald's. I go, I don't know the name of this street. And I asked the lady, what's the name of the street? And the lady behind the thing goes, oh, you look for the Space Dragons Clubhouse. <laughs> and I said, yeah. I said, how is she? I, I don't even look like a biker. Why would she know that? So another pe some people behind us in line getting some food goes, we'll take you to it. So oh, okay. <laughs> We followed this family and they drove us right to your clubhouse. This is in Oakland. And one thing I thought about all this, you guys are more than bikers. You had no biker, no, you had no biker uh, attire on or nothing. 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 I'm, 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 a, I'm a cameraman in this. I'm doing this yeah. documentary film. I had nothing, no camera, no biker, no nothing. And oh, it's, wow. you're looking for the East Bay Dragons. So this nice family <laughs> drove us to your clubhouse. So one thing I got out of this whole thing, you guys are more than just bikers. You are a pillar in that community which is amazing. And it's really great that I read too, that you guys in the parade when Golden State won his first championship. <laughs> I yeah. missed it. Yeah, when they opened the Some of the guys were, but I missed that one. <laughs> when they reopened the Golden Gate Bridge, I mean, I mean the, the Bay Bridge, I was looking at the news and I see one of my club members, had, I seen the patch. He was one of the first cars or bikes went across the bridge when they reopened the bridge though. So we, we are, we are part of this 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 area. It's part of the bay, definitely yeah. part of the bay. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. That's you know, Oakland was it was a very interesting place. You know, I, I've been there like three, four times. And every time I came there to see you guys, I had no other reason to go there. I mean, yeah. it's fun. Some friends of mine went to the basketball game because the Toronto Raptors played you guys. Yeah, yeah. Your last loss was to us, and it's, yeah. it's, and some of my friends went to the game and they were talking about Oakland and how you know you guys went across the bridge from San Francisco. So let me ask you guys a question, Paul Butler. I'm gonna bring this room to you again. Okay. Where do you see all this is going? You know, since Toby Jane has passed away, right? Yeah. He was, you know, he was the foundation of motorcycle, black motorcycle club culture. Where do you think is there is there somebody else new in the country clubs that you guys look at? Because you know what, you guys were the foundation of us starting. Because you know, when I came back and I said and I had a bunch of guys and friends I rode with, I said we should start an MC. And they said, who should we be like? And I said, these guys are what we call the East Bay Dragons. And we studied you, and we studied you. We watched everything you do. I listened to every kind of video that Toby did. And I said, I really like these black men, how they look at life and what they're doing. So who, is anybody else in the US is doing what you guys doing? Because 
you guys are just not a motorcycle club. You're very famous. You're the most famous club in the U.S. besides the Hells Angels. Wow. Well, we didn't say wow at the same time. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Wow, because there were, probably, there, there were clubs like the, you take the uh, Chosen Few. Right. They, they, uh, they was, it started, I think, uh, 54. Right. And I think the D.O. started in 56 and, and, you know, the Dragons started in 60. So those clubs already established, the, the Rattlers and all those people. The difference in, in those guys and us was that they rode the big bikes with the saddlebags and they all put on the uniform with the caps and the boots right. and all that. And so we was like, we had to strip down bikes. We had to leave eyes, leave eyes, you know, so we were stripped down. Our parents were stripped down as well as our bikes. Not the oil on your pants. Too. Yeah, well, we had to grease a brand new pair of blue jeans, a brand new pair of Levi's. We had to grease them down before we even put them on. You know? But my point is, those yeah. clubs you spoke about are more popular yeah. clubs, but you are the most famous club because Jay Leno was on your. You know, oh, wow. Yeah, that's we what did. What are talking that. about? You know, yeah, most okay. Because I know a lot of civilians know oh. about you guys. You won't believe it. A lot of civilians know about the East Bay Dragons. Wow. Well, I uh, guess so, you know. I, yeah, it is. You, you're the most famous motorcycle club outside of the Hells Angels because in the 60s, you know, this was something I said, you know, even watching the TV show Sons of Arnegy and all these shows, and I watch it. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, one yeah. thing I don't get is why did somebody do a TV show about you guys? I don't know. We tried to get it together. We, we you know, we've been. I know a movie was trying to, in, in 2006, a guy was going to do there's been a lot of people came to us and got uh, the, you know, uh, information about our club, and they they spoke about making a movie about us, and you know, but it, it never came to pass. It, you know, like it's, it never it never matured. I mean, it just because I, I think that it'd be you know, you no, know, just a movie about motorcycle club is is more to it. And what people don't really get is the black biker set, and and I find it very interesting. I've been all I'm mean, day twenty. I've been all the sturge, all of them, right? Yeah. It's something about going to a roundup. Yeah, that that I found very interesting, very amazing. You know, just people of color just they just do things different. They party different. They look yeah. at life different. And I had so much fun at those events being from Canada. And I used to ride before I had my class. I used to ride to those events for the last thirty years by myself. No matter where it was, I was go by myself. And I had barbecue and I met really cool people. And I thought of that Sturgis in Daytona, I always felt uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't know why those events. I just kind of felt uncomfortable with with them. It's funny you say that. I've never been to Sturgis, but I've always watched it on the movie, I'm on, you know, on the television, you know, and, and, and watch, you know, the things that's going on in Sturgis. And, and, and for myself, I don't think I'd be comfortable there either. Right. You know, I mean, like, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to seem prejudiced or nothing like that, but I mean, I've, I've experienced, you know, being old, old I'm 78 years old, so I mean, come from the South. Right. A lot of white people get together. They they tend to do things that they not wouldn't do if it wasn't but a few of them. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. And once you you get a bunch of them together like that, you know, I don't know if they would deal with us. I don't think they would really mess with the dragons because we sort of like umbrella by the Hell's Angels. You know, the Hell's Angels kind of like, huh? What I'm go saying? ahead. What I said. What I said. Something wrong? No. Go ahead. What I mean by that, you know, like <laughs> even here, you know, a lot of the times. Uh, a lot of guys give a lot of respect because we, the Hells Angels give a respect. We're not really in the bed with them like that, but we've always had this. Toby Harlow built this relationship with Sonny Bars years ago. Right. Uh, you know, at the, at the diner, you know, they used to go down at the breakfast place and they'd have breakfast and coffee. And I guess they would sort of like talk back and forth about motorcycle things. So Toby built that relationship with the Hells Angels here in Open. So we have a pretty good rapport with them here, you know. So, I mean, we've been to other places and, uh, People, you know, we was able to go beyond their they circle, you know, like they would have, they'd be there and they would take, put ropes around their bikes. And then we was able to just walk right in and be hugging and shaking yeah. hands with other, other people see it, you know, and they were going, oh, wow, wow, the, the dragons are cool with the Hells Angels. Especially yeah. with the, this thing they got up in Reno, the street vibrations. Yeah. They bring a lot of bikers and a lot of people from all over there, you know, so a lot of rival games be up there too, you know, so. Because I was up there and I was, then that's the second time I saw you guys. I was oh. up in Reno, Nevada at Street Bright Bases and I found something really weird. And I was up there with my girlfriend at that, what was it with the, I was up there. And yeah. the really funny part about it is when you guys rode up to this hotel, you got this motel, you took over the whole motel. There's one motel yeah. there. And he's got like two or three floors. And I was watching you guys and it's kind of like, i never seen bikes like that. You guys had beautiful bikes. Everybody was like, paid homage to you guys. Everybody was, like a lot of the clubs were up there. A lot of the white clubs were up there. 
I think you guys, I, I'm not mistaken, you're the only black club I saw up there. Maybe you know, the, 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 it's funny you say that because we had this hotel, and, and the hotel we was all there, all blacks. We want to say that we was all at the hotel, and our bikes was there. And with, out of all of the bikes, all the tricked out bikes, and all you know, they had all the big time bike builders and all that. Yeah, people was fascinated about our bike. Yes, that's what I noticed. I noticed yeah, so it's like everybody left the bike show or was looking at your bikes. <laughs> yeah, I had uh, at that time I had a black uh, road glide. And I had an alligator seat on it, but I had the legs and the paws and all that on it. Everybody was really tripping on that. Everybody used to, oh man, they, <laughs> they want to take a lot of pictures, want to put their kids on my bike and everything. Yeah. You know, but, but it was something about our bikes drawing everybody to us. I don't, you know, it's our bikes, so we don't really trip on it as hard as somebody that's that's not a part of us. You know, they they find things that are fascinated about our bikes where we have them every day, so it don't seem like that. Just so, so, and, and so many good things are, are come out of that. Let me tell you what come out of that. You know, and racism is a really weird thing. Let me tell you, what, some good comes out of it, some bad comes out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I read some things that Harley Davidson wouldn't sell you guys bikes in the sixties, mm -hmm. fifties. Way back, way back, yeah. So what did they do? You guys started the chopper motorcycle. You started doing your own shit. And then they picked up a lot of a lot of the stuff we did to our bikes. Harley Davidson started selling it. Let me tell you something. That sounds crazy because I was way up north in Canada and I had these Hells Angels working on my bike. This is about 15 years ago. Okay. And these white dudes told me, they said, you know what? You know where Scream Eagle comes from? I go, what are you talking about Scream Eagle? He said, they came from these Bay Dragons. Yeah. Northern, Northern Canada, some white dudes told me that. I like, what? He goes, they used to go up there. And this is the Hells Angels telling me, they used to go up there and watch the black guys build bikes. Watch oh. their bikes and come back to the factory and make money off of it. Yeah, yeah, you know, they said that about, especially when we would take our bikes to the shop to get things done to the shop that we couldn't do, you know, no time or whatever they mm -hmm. did. And and what they would do, they would take pictures and they would design bikes. They, they did the Sturgis bike design, design, I think, design, made that design off the East Bay Dragons. And we had the 21 inch front wheel and T bars and, you know, we shifting on the back wheel. We did a lot of things, you know, just, and then they made money off of it. Yeah. It, it, Chrome and everything. Most time you get a bike, you get brand new screws on your bike. Right. But then after, after we start going to the shop and they start taking pictures of our bikes, we did chroming on. We just take a big old bag of chrome or whatever. I mean, screws and bolts and and whatever we had put in the chrome shop. And if it come back, if it look good, we put it on the bike. If not, we lay it to the side. So <laughs> when our bikes went to the shop, they took pictures and they started designing bikes off of that stuff. Well, what now is you, you can go to the shop now and get all kind of chrome bolts. Before you couldn't get too many chrome bolts. But the thing is, is this, you gotta understand something, you guys got six decades of being on bikes. With six decades, bikes have changed. Yeah. yeah. And you took a little bit of the old, you mix it with the new, a little bit of old mixed with the new, and I gotta give it to you, I got a chop. I got, yeah. I got a soft tail that I ride, and I got a chop as my show bike. I got oh, that from you guys. Oh, wow. You know, the bagger stuff is just not, I got about three or four guys with baggers in my club, but most yeah. of the guys in my club got chops. Yeah, yeah. And something because you know that is a motorcycle. A chop is a motorcycle. You know, yeah, just, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the bikes today look like convertibles. Yeah, that's true. I'm pretty sure in the next couple of years, Harley Davidson, them bikes will go in reverse. They'll be going in yeah. reverse. And and it, it took all the fun yeah, out of it. They're already in reverse. They have bikes that have a backup. Yeah, yeah, so. so, you know, with it said and done, so it's funny. I remember going to a 50th anniversary in Detroit. I get to tell you the story. And this Outlaw Club, major, big, big, huge club. And what happened was uh, one of the vice presidents of the, of the Detroit Charter when he introduced me to the guy who ran it all from Alabama. You know what I'm talking about. The first, I got talking to the, the guy kind of gave me two minutes until he read the support patch on my thing to the East Bay Dragons. He goes, wait a minute. He goes, you guys know Toby and East Bay Dragons? I go, yeah, they're kind of our mentors. And the guy turned to me and goes, give me your personal phone number. I'm going to come visit you. You guys, you guys have been like fucking credit card to us. <laughs> it's kind of like they kind of like talk to us because we guys from Canada and who who are they? They're really nobodies. Until I start talking, our connection with you, you men and you guys are. And Toby was really nice to bless my club and bless us because we needed that. We needed some good luck because we're the only black old black club up here in Canada, and we needed some good luck. And I have to thank Paul Butler, you, when I talked to you on the phone, and I don't think you believe me, that we all jumped on a plane and came to visit you. <laughs> I got my whole club to jump on a plane. As you know what, we want to I believe you. I just was waiting. 
<laughs> yeah. so, so, Paul, I'm going to ask you something. I'm going to ask you a question, brother. Where's this all going? Who's the bike bike you said? Does it get better or get worse? Uh, it, it's changed. It is changed. changing a lot. It changed yeah. a lot, you know. Um, in, in my day, I mean, we were more uh, connected to our bikes. We wanted to learn how to work on it. We wanted to learn how to repair them if they broke down or something. These kids nowadays, I've seen my club members bike break or get a flat or something like that or whatever the problem, they get right on the cell phone, call the Harley Davidson shop, they bring them another bike and get a trailer, take that old bike, and get, <laughs> take it away. And then what we would do, we'd all band together, you know, all of the members, and we all knew something, a little something about the bikes. And, you know, we hey, Paul Butler, no lecture, though. Paul Hop, no transmissions. Of, and so mm -hmm. it, it really drew us together, you know. She we, sees we, well, we lost that. We losing that, you know, with the brand new bike. I was just telling Paul just before we set this up. I was looking at my bike. I say the times when I first started riding, I had sports, I had a chop and everything, you know, and I used to always be, you know, uh, patching it together, nail the screwing this together, changing motors and transmission and all that. I said, now I'm I'm able to buy a brand new bike and I can't ride. My health won't let me ride. I'm sitting there, I got a brand new bike here with 2,000, 200, 278 miles on it sitting right there behind the screen here. And I, you know, I can't ride, you know, I, you know. Do you think these kids today have more disposable money than we had back in the day? Uh, mm. I, I, what do you think? Uh, some of them do. Yeah, maybe some of them do. Yeah, <laughs> some, some, of, do. some of them do. Some of them do, yeah. but uh, they get changed. They sh One thing that bothers me is, is that I see change. Like when Toba Jean start put this together, put this club together, it was all about protecting his family, his, his not just his close family, but his extended family and his friends, getting them together and find a way to protect them and keep them out of trouble. That's what it was all about. And, uh, you know, what about motorcycles? Because he wasn't even thinking about motorcycles then. So they started the car club, you know, with the cars kind of giving them a reason for getting together. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but then that went on, eventually went to the motorcycles. But the whole thing, it was about building friendship, love between men, black men. That's right. what it was about. Right. And uh, I think that piece is getting lost these days. Right. right. That piece is getting lost. I mean, it's it's more about the motorcycle. It's more about uh, what a lot of people, it's more about, and they don't even seem to remember this other part. Mm -hmm. And so every chance I get, I try to remind them what it's really supposed to be about. And matter of fact, we having a big meeting tomorrow. And I'm, that's going to be one of the things I'm going to be bringing up. Well, 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 that's one of the reasons I have you on this show because that's something that I preach with my club members. We get back to that, the principles. You know, it's really funny because mm -hmm. so many times I wanted to throw in a towel on this thing in my club thing, and then I got people around me goes, "Well, why did you start this? You told me the reason you start that so these men, these black men, can be better fathers and better father, better fathers to the children, and better husbands to their wives. Mm -hmm. And you lead by example, Harry, because you live. I'm very conservative. I don't but weed, any I just this yeah. is not my thing. I'm 64 years old and I don't even look at it. I work out. I, 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 I live a very healthy life. And what I try to do is I try to live by example. I try to get the young men. So every time I have a, a, a person in my club is kind of troubled. And sometimes I just don't have any patience and I just want to say, go somewhere else. Then I stop and think about why I started in the first place. But it's the same yeah. principles that Toby started because let me tell you something, today's black men, they need men like us every I day. Do. And what you just said, Paul, how Tom, Toby thought about all this is one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on here because I'm on so many social networks and listening to these young black men today, they have no idea why they wear a patch. They have, mm -hmm. if you ask them, why do you wear this? They can't even answer it. Well, I'm looking for the brotherhood. I'm looking for this. No, that's not what you're looking for. Be honest with you. Why, why did you join this? Yeah. Because what it is, is these motorcycle clubs is nothing but self-help places. It's, it's yeah. a place where men can walk, yeah. talk to each other. About the family I can, I, life. I can attest. I can attest to that. Because where I came from, West Oakland, most of the guys that I grew up with and went to school with, they're most are either in the penitentiary for life or they're dead. Mm -hmm. And when I got to the Dragons in 1964, it was a different. The, the 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 style or what the you know they, it, it, I wanted to be a part of these guys. Right. Not so much with the bikes. Is the fit the guys was more like. I didn't have any brothers. I had sisters, six sisters, but I don't have no brother. Right. So these guys are more like Toby Jean and Joe Lewis, they were like my brothers. Right. I mean, you know, hooking all them to all of the older guys that I first got in the club. And they was, 
they treated me like a brother. And Toby Dean said, oh, but it wasn't too long before he passed a year or so ago, after he just passed, he was sitting at the table. Mm -hmm. And he looked over, turned and looked at me, he said, ha, he said, you just like one of my brothers. Mm -hmm. I'll do anything for you that I would do for my own flesh and blood brothers. And that made me really feel good. Right. Man, I've been with him for, I followed that man for 61 years, man. Right. And I feel like if I hadn't gotten the dragons and, and hung in there with the dragons and, and those type of guys that I was around, I probably been, I had to. I was in that area. I think I'd have been dead, or you know, or I'd have been in the Well, how I deal with this too is like we've been. I've been around eleven years in, my, in the club, having this club thing together, and uh, and all my guys, it's like I curse them right out. They like I just, you know, maybe talk them. I just curse them right out. Tell them, and I try to talk them. You know, I'm older. A lot of these guys are in their forties and thirties. They're a lot yeah. younger than I am. And I always tell them every time, every time I'm telling you something, it's for the better of you to be a better man. And I know you, because a lot of black men today don't have fathers. That's another thing. It's another topic. A lot of them don't have any kind of OG or older in their life to give them some direction in life. I was very fortunate because I grew up in a house with two parents. My father kicked my ass, and now I got two oh. older brothers who are still on me. But a lot of these dudes are not as fortunate as us. And I try to talk to them about things. And sometimes they get mad. And, a couple of times they say you're going to quit the club and I tell them you ain't going nowhere. Go have a beer, <laughs> check up and you go over that corner and leave me alone. And they yeah. don't quit and that's it. That's yeah. it. You know. <laughs> if they get mad, then that, that let you know they heard you. That they hear what you're telling them. Yeah. Because if, if, if it didn't get mad, I mean, what you're telling them is went over the head. But if they got mad, it got through to them some kind of way. Oh, I, 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 get, I get guys in this club want to murder me sometime, but they know I'm right. <laughs> yeah, that's good, man. That's great. Mm. Well, yeah, well, anyway, like I say again, it's like, you know, you know, gentlemen, it's like, where do you think this is all going? Like, especially you, Paul, I want to ask you that question because we spoke yeah. on the phone a few times. And I love talking to you because every time you talk to you, you teach me something. Boy, I didn't you know teach that. me something every time I talk to you. <laughs> you don't think it is. I'm asking you questions because I'm trying to solve you know, over here. You know, we, we hope for it to continue. Yeah. We hope for, we hope that the younger guys coming up under us would get something from the, the root, from what we started with. They give us props though. So the guys in the club give us older guys props, you know, once we start talking, they listen to us and everything. They, even when we on the, if we out at dances and everything and things get kind of out of line, I can walk up there and I'm not even the president. I can walk up there and say, hey man, cut that out. Let's don't do that. Let's do that. So they respect us like that, you know, but we may have that in our club, but the other clubs coming up, they, they, it's like a fad. It's just like the, the tennis shoes they buy. They, I mean, the, 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 you know, they, they buy the tennis shoes, they get dirty, throw them away. You know, I used to wear my tennis shoes until the bottom came out of them, you know? Me too. <laughs> but the kids nowadays, man, the cardboard yeah, cardboard, it. anything, it's the rag or something, you have double socks or anything like that. But, um, but these kids here, man, I don't, they don't have, if you ask them, they don't know where they're going. Right. I mean, you know, the, the when I was coming up, if the older person, the adult, would ask me, uh, what would you want to be? Then you right off your head, you I want to be a fireman, I want to be a policeman, I want to be this, a doctor or something. You ask a child that today, they stuck. Mm. They don't know, you know, they don't they can't tell you what, what, what you know what they want to be or what they want to do. And, and you know, that's all about me too, because the media shows quick, easy money. They think yeah, yeah. rapper or whatever, they think that's because you yeah. ask. You line five kids up from, from the age of 10 years old to 15. Yes, they all want to be a rapper for some period. Yeah. For some fair reason, they think that's a quick, easy millionaire. You ain't got to study homework. You ain't got to know how to read a book. You just you just spit out some rhymes and all set and somebody's going to give you a big paycheck. And something yeah. somebody's told them that. You don't know how to do it. Told them that. What, I, what I did last night, I was watching the, uh, uh, YouTube. And I, I'm really into this guy, Javante Davis, the boxer. Okay. The kid that came out of yeah, uh, I know what you're talking about yeah, yeah, he's got in trouble. He got 14 uh what is what is it 14 felonies. Right. He's in his he's in his Bugatti or the what it one of them hot rod cars, right. and he right. ran through a red light and he hurt four people. Right. And what happened was, he called somebody and and they came up with another car. Whatever he had in in his car, they transferred it into this car. Right. And they cut. And I brought that up to say, here's a kid. 25 years old, making millions of dollars, got a, a hell of a career, and he's blowing it by running through red lights or, or if he's drinking or whatever he's doing. I mean, you would think he's at a at a he's at a at a at a, 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 a 
plateau in his life that everybody working all their life. Some guys who work older than me will never reach the, the plateau that he's on. But the thing he, is, he's 25 years old, he don't realize where he's at. Because he doesn't, have, going, he doesn't have a social going, circle. He doesn't have a social circle around him to teach him better. Mm -hmm. You know, he's hanging out with his friends who just like he's off the gravy chain, but he doesn't have like people around him to teach him. Teach Floyd him. Mayweather. He got Mayweather in his, in his ear all the time. Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather, you know, if you if you really look at him, he's been having money a long time. Right. But you don't ever hear him really doing that really stupid nothing thing about it. He might got a few little scrapes here and there, but he, he's never done a really over the top. But you got, the, what's the guy, uh, Adrian Bruner, you know, like uh, 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 Devontae and Davis and Adrian Bruner sort of like run together, you know, so he saw like patterning himself after he got a few years older than him, so he kind of patterned himself for what he's doing. And he's really making a lot of mistakes too, so. So, so you think that's, that's what it is, this youth today, because, yeah, yeah. because in the MC world, it's like this, yeah. like the MC world, a lot of these young, young I see this, I'm on social networks and talking to the, these young guys and my friend in, in, in LA, Miss Showtime, mm -hmm. she says to me, we had made her a million comments of conversation about the youth in the MC world and seeing like they kind of making up new rules as they go along. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, they're just making up new shit because I read some stuff and I'm going, what? What are they talking about? And it, it's different, like it's, it's different now. And how can we get back to principles? In the MC world, because I love this culture. Hey man, hey man, hey. And I'd like to see more clubs like your clubs. That's, that's a big job. The, yeah, the, the, yeah, because yeah, yeah. these kids now, all they want to do is speed. They want a pretty motorcycle. They want to go buy it. They don't want to build it themselves. They don't want to design it themselves. They want to go there and have this guy, but they plop down $50,000 or seventy, eighty thousand dollars and have a guy to do the bike just like he wanted. And if, if you know, they, drive, they ride it for a few years, they don't like that. They sell it to do something else. Our bikes, <laughs> was engraved in us, man. We got this old bike and we nailed it together. It was a part of us, man. You we see, could be riding it and we could hear something that's not really right in, you know, we, you know, we was a part of the bike. So, so we, have, we have to get these young men to take pride in their bikes. That's, I really yeah, love yeah. my motorcycles. I, you know, I, I, I go look at them every day and I take pride in it, everything I've done to them. And yeah. I think a lot of these dudes, it's just, it doesn't really mean anything to them. That's true. It doesn't, the, the motorcycle doesn't mean anything to them. Pride in their bikes. We got to get them to take pride in themselves yeah. too. Well, with all that's all entangled in one thing. Just take yeah. pride in period. Yeah, right. I think these platforms that I, I'm trying to start here is to get, yeah. get people to listen to yeah. us. And then, and, I, and like, and like, it's funny because I had a friend of mine. She said, "You should talk to this club, this club, and this club." And look, I said, "Well, what have they done for me to talk to them?" Well, they kind. Of, I said, "No, no, no, no. I need to talk to guys like Paul, Paul Butler, and 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 and, and Mr. Harper." I need yeah. these young men to listen to men like you. Yeah. And all I've been doing lately is trying to get get the OGs on my my show, yeah. because yeah. I want to inform and I want to inspire. Because I tell you something, in the MC world, I think these young men are lost why they even joined the club. And you guys yeah. made so much sense saying why you join the club. It's about the motorcycle. I something break down. Go to my buddy's house. We fix the bikes together. Yeah. We, the yeah. black men come together, have a get conversations. We need you know. I mean, good conversations, how to be better men. It's really good time. We used to have a really good time just, yeah. just sitting around, you know, maybe come to my garage. I've had a lot of guys over here at my garage right here. You know, I, you have, I always had beer and stuff like that. I had this bar and that. It'll be, it's not there no more, but I had a bar. Kept it stocked up, you know. We sit back here with, and it kept me out of trouble. I mean, you know, we sit here, we, we didn't want to do nothing else. You know, we would work on the bikes and make sure if I had a problem, everybody stay here until it's solved. I, I don't know. Uh, my guys, the younger guys, what they're trying to do now, they're trying to get on the road more. You know, they want to ride more. The older guys, you know, we saw like have ridden. We rode a long time, a lot of times before. So it's not really out there for us. Right. Like, you know, like they want to be. Now, one of my club members in LA, he's coming up with this cross country thing. And it looks like everybody's excited. He got several clubs that in, involved in this just to go for this cross, cross country ride, you know, ride, you know. So everybody want to do that. This is what everybody want to do. If we can get a lot of those type of things together, that'll pull a whole lot of guys together too. To get out there on that road and just you and your bike, right? You know, going from point A to point B, really draws you together because you're the only thing you have to depend on. Paul's been out there a lot of time by himself. You know, we're out God knows where. You know, so so so, Mr. Butler, I got to ask you a question. So sure, why didn't it, why didn't uh, the uh, your club open up chapters anywhere else? <laughs> Toba Jean, 
was adamant about that. He did not want any chapters. And several times, it came up at least four or five times since I've, since I've been there. Uh, there was some, we had a club member down in LA wanted to start one down there. Banks, at one time, wanted to start one in, in Nevada. Yeah, Washington. Uh, okay, Washington. Yeah. Um, what he had to say was that it's hard enough to keep control of guys you can get your hands on. Right. And you got somebody way across country, he says, you don't know what they're doing and they're messing up your name. Yeah. He's Bay Dragon somewhere else. Yeah. He didn't want that. So, so Mr. Livingston's not here anymore. Is there a future for something like that? I have no idea, but I, I kind of stick with his, yeah. his ideas and goals. <laughs> Uh, he kind of raised me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been knowing Toby Jean probably longer than most guys. Uh, he actually, his wife stayed across the street from me before they got married. Right. So that's where I first saw him at. And yeah. uh, I was scared of him. <laughs> I seen this old rough looking guy over there. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I was kind of scared of him. I was scared of the East Bay Dragon. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know, I was a teenager. I was a teenager when they started yeah. back in 59. I was scared of them. My brother, Jerry Butler, he was actually in the original club when it was a car club. Right. And, uh, and he started bringing them over to my house <laughs> and hanging out. That's how I got involved with him. Yeah, yeah. And then he started bringing me with him over to Toby Jean's house. Right. We'd be in his garage shooting pool and They'd be talking about motorcycles. I just hung out with them, hung out. I guess after a while, I just decided I wanted a motorcycle. <laughs> okay, so, Paul Hop, you've been in the club for 50 years? Yeah, yeah. a little bit more. And, and, I started, uh, I started in 64. 64, so that's almost, it's almost, it's a little bit, yeah, 50 yeah. years, yeah. 50 years, 50 years, yeah. It's more than 50 years. And, and you, Mr. Butler, you? I, I've been in since uh, 73. Okay. Yeah. So you've been in 40, 40. Oh, Almost 50 years 47, old. 48 years, something like that, yeah. You know, to, to that, uh, first, that question that you asked Paul about uh, why we never had chapters. You know, when we were younger, we wanted chapters because other, other guys that we knew in other clubs had chapters and they boasted about having chapters here and chapters there. And we didn't have it, Toby wouldn't let us have it. Mm -hmm. So down through the years, we were able to look at those guys that had the chapters and see how they towed their clubs up. Yeah, some of the clubs just went poop. They went right out of, out of the thing, and the ones that stayed together, the chapters, drew a bad name on them. And you know, it was it was in areas they was getting shot at and all that kind of. I think that one of the main things Toby didn't want. He didn't want us to haul off and get killed over something somebody else did in another state or something like that. You know, so because you know, a lot of times it comes from outside. It it comes from civilians. Right. Most time guys in the club they usually get along pretty good together. But once you get the outside, you know, people come from the outside. Uh, they start stuff, you know. They a lot of guys come and pick at the dragons. I mean, pick it not the dragons, motorcycle riders, because they look at you as being different from them. Uh, you know, maybe uh, people look at you different from them. They, you you think you something. You riding this bike and everything. So they 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 want to. It's the same thing on the freeway. You know, you be riding years ago. You riding on the freeway. Car run upside you. First thing they do is give you the the peace sign and stuff. And go ahead on now. You're on the freeway right now. You got this guy right upside, and he he, he swooped the car into you, right? And he get up in front and stop it. You. you know, he's challenging you, you know, on the freeway. So that's something never happened, you know. So I don't know. I don't think answer to your question. I, I don't think we'll ever have a chapter. We've had members all over. We've had members, you know, in Oklahoma, or Louisiana, or Nevada. We'd have a lot of members, you know, members. From LA. You have members that where your yeah. but don't live in Oakland. No, they don't live in Oakland. They live in other states and other. Oh, you know, I didn't see, I didn't know that. I, I thought everybody had to live in Oakland. No, we have. They, they but they. You can't start a chapter. We had a lot of members that that lived in uh in L.A. You know, during the time we had some guys living in L.A. and then right here now we have some guys living in Sacramento. You right. know, but this is the mother chapter. Oakland is the mother chapter. Yeah, yeah. Only chapter. The only <laughs> chapter is the mother chapter. The mother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you say you say ain't nobody opening no house. You just you can be you no. be part of it. Okay. Now you I have part of it. You ain't gonna be. You can't go nowhere in offspring. Those yeah. guys that were out of state, especially those those guys in L.A. Uh, that didn't work out. We got one down there right now, and I don't know if it's gonna work out. <laughs> it won't work out because we still require that they come to club meetings so so often, yeah. and that they be on every club run. 
So that's still the re same requirements. Everybody's got that same requirement. So yeah. if you way off down there and you can't get back up here to do these yeah, things, then yeah. you're not, you're not going to be in too long. <laughs> yeah, we had one member from uh, Nevada and he, you know, we got to give him a thought. He was our vice president and uh, he would come from Nevada to his to club meeting and have to change clothes at least twice to get back home. Cause once he get, you know, past Sacramento, it's all snow going up to his house. He yeah. lived in Reno and Sparks up there, right? So he had to be, he, he said he would wear these clothes, ride on his bike, he'd be on his motorcycle and he'd get all Every wet. week, and every then he, Saturday. He knew these people in these different uh, stops up there, you know, the the, uh, the filling station and thing. And he would go in and take his clothes off and dry his clothes off and get them all dried and get on to go another 10, 20 miles where they had to do to get home, you know? So that was dedication, you know? <laughs> we didn't really expect him to do all that, you know? But I mean, it showed that he was really a, yeah. he was a part of, he really was a part of the dragon. He was really a dragon, yeah, so. So, you know, you know, before I always in my show, I always ask, I ask all my, my, my um, guests one question and I said, so, you know, what collect you already live in a leaving a legacy in this whole motorcycle club thing? What what else do you think you guys else can do besides somebody make a film about you guys? As for the film, there's actually someone that has a contract, and uh, I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen with it. They actually brought people who were going to be actors. Uh, the guy that was going to play Toby Jean and somebody else came to the clubhouse mm -hmm. and business and everything. Uh, that they still had that contract and it hasn't expired. Yeah. Uh, oh, actually, I think it was renewed just a year or two ago. Um, so I don't know what's happening with that. Toby read, Jean, yeah, Toby Jean kind of left that in charge of his daughter. Right. So okay. uh, we can't mess with that. <laughs> we can't change that. Uh, so we can't have, I mean, we can get other things done like documentaries and stuff like that. But as for the other part, until this is, um, either this contract expires or they complete this movie they're going to do. Uh, she's kind of got control over that. But two years ago, I met this, This, you know, we, in Toronto, we have the Toronto Film Festival. is is just as big as Cannes and uh, in, in the one in uh, also in up, up, an upstate. Where you guys, what state is that? Anyway, this film producer I met and director, he did a movie called The Mission. I gave him Toby's book about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, where I worked at, he was there and did some stuff. And I shook his hand and we started talking. I said, hey, man, I really like this movie you did called The Mission with Robert De Niro. He does big budget films. Mm -hmm. And I had the book and I gave it to him. I said, look, let me tell you something right now. This is a story. He took the book. He went through two pages. He goes, oh, I'm going to go back to California because his girlfriend lives in Toronto. I'm going to go to California to think about this. And I said, give me, here's my number. If he ever needs to talk to somebody about it. I said, this is a story. It's not like the Sons of Iron King. This is a human. This is a human story about a group of men who started something. And you know, I know if you like the stories about the Black Panthers and all the things that happened in Oakland, California. There are so many stories that come out of Oakland, California. You know, either the Hell's Angels, uh, the East, uh, what's the, the football club, the Oakland Raiders, uh, Al David. Oh, yeah. you, there's so many stories come out of that town. Just be and I mentioned that to him. I said, "You got four stories in one. You got Al Davis. You got the East Bay Dragons. You got the Hell's Angels." And, and, and you got the Black Panthers. And if you did a story or a movie between the eight, between the time of 64 and 72, you got some, he looked at me, he goes, I never thought of that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're probably right about this. He goes, so oh, you thought about it. I says, because, you know, I've done documentary films. I've worked on films. Mm -hmm. I even wrote the script. I wrote some stuff for this because I think it's so interesting. And it's a human story. And what got me thinking was when I was in the McDonald's and that couple drove me to your clubhouse. And they wasn't bikers. It was just this conservative couple getting some food for the kids. We'll drive you because you guys are the pillar of that community. Okay, yeah. and, and with that said and done, it's like that's kind of what we wanted to do here in Toronto, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing like this. We live in a country where there's no black motorcycle club. They have mixed race clubs, right? Mm -hmm. But their foundation, how they do things, is more like on the white set. Yeah, Not yeah. What we do it. We we that, tell. Go ahead. That, that's one of the reasons why. I think. I would say this is the reason why they haven't really made a black motorcycle uh, uh, movie about black motorcycle riders, because I think it's dominated by whoever does that. They have to have, it's got to be a good writer, have a good story to, 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 when we get involved, because most of all the motorcycle clubs are based on the white clubs, the Hells Angels and all of the, the Arkley, Mayhem and the Mayans, I mean, all that kind of stuff. So if you have one, 
one club, one motorcycle movie, people look at it, it's, it's all basically the same thing, you know, running, riding your bikes and beating people up. So for the Dude of Dragons, it's going to take a good writer to really put that together. No, no, pull hop, it doesn't take a good writer. You understand how Hollywood works. Are they going to get their money back? Yeah, it's yeah. All money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See this film. Now, you can yeah. have a story about the East Bay Dragons, but trust I'm me. Saying, I'm saying the good writer, to make the movie, you know, where it's interesting, where people want to go see it, you know what I'm saying? But the thing, wrong. The, the thing is, but, but I know how Hollywood works because yeah. off camera, I'll tell you what I do for a living. I've worked okay. with a lot of films. Okay. It's, it's gotta be, it's gotta be uh, maybe the Hell's Angels or something in it because you gotta have white actors in it for to get it produced, if that makes any sense. That makes sense. What I just said. Yeah. It can be about the dragons, but then it's gotta be, the the, the, the story's gotta be wrapped around the, the journalist who's telling your story. And he has to be like Brad Pitt or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That? And then, yeah. then they could then they would put fifty million, a hundred million dollars in making this film because it's just all black folks. Those kind of films they don't feel don't make money. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because filmmaking and storytelling is all about money. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That. everything. I think you got an amazing story, right? The thing yeah, needs yeah, to be told, yeah. but it's all about making money. Because if I was investing hundred million dollars or something, I have to make three hundred million back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So business is a business. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So yeah, what yeah. happens is, who is sitting on this film, they're thinking, well, who wants to see it? Or it take somebody to pitch the film to show them they could make the three, make 300 million. This is all about money at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I've been, uh, I've had probably in the last two years had three calls from different, different people in LA and Hollywood. Yeah. They want to make a movie. But because of this contract, that's the holdup. Well, the thing is, two things you might have to do. You might have to change the name of the, make the movie about you guys, but your club is something else. Yeah. yeah. To get around that. Or what you do is tell, tell the people who's calling you up to buy the contract. Mm. Uh, believe it or not, one of them is already trying to do that. Mm. One of them is trying to do exactly that. Well, anyway, gentlemen, I'm gonna let you go today. I was. This has been a brilliant. It was, it was amazing talking to you guys. Yeah, and I can't believe. And I have to thank you for even trying to spend some time with me. I'm a nobody. You guys are the East Bay Dragons. I'm a guy who just started, and I put this platform together to to inspire and. Know he is a nobody. <laughs> but you know what I mean. I'm just you know you guys are the East Bay Dragons, and I totally want more clubs to see you and. I mean, take a ride up to your clubhouse and meet and talk and break bread with you guys because you yeah. got a lot to say and a lot to teach these young men, and, and, and including my the guys in my club were so ecstatic and so intimidated when they met you guys, Paul. They were like, you know, one guy, you know, he got so drunk, you know, he couldn't drive the car back to the hotel because I said he doesn't really drink, and I said, "Why are you so fucked up?" He goes, hey, he he it. It. I like a couple of alcohol. Yeah, 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 yeah. He enjoyed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You talking about? Of course, I'm drunk. Yeah. That's what we want. We want guys to come to our clubhouse have a good time. and then have a good time. Yeah. We want our clubhouse to be, if you're traveling across, across country, we want our clubhouse to be um, the place to go. Yeah, go to the drag. It's a it's a, a health spot. If you get out of town, your bike break down or something, you can come to us, we're going to patch you back together and get you going. Right. You know, we've been doing that for years. I mean, you guys come from all over the states mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, their bikes broke down or they ran out of money or whatever. We, we, you be juicy up, and we can, you know, keep going. Biggest you know? pull hop. That's what I designed here. That's what I have here. Our clubhouse. We call it an American consulate. It, okay. It, right. They, they can get across that border. I tell everybody. They always try to say, "Your paper straight to get across the border." You yeah. all are welcome to join us now. My, we don't have a clubhouse per se, a strip of bowls and all that stuff. I have classrooms in my clubhouse. Okay. I have a pool table. I have a bar. We have a barbecue. We have a okay. garage. And at the end, you have you got a lift in the garage. You want to fix it, work on your bike. I invite all all my friends south of the border, east east and west of the border, to come visit us. And I I, I modeled ourselves exactly from you guys. And I told you, you know, so many people want to bother, but COVID has kind of screwed everything up right now. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Had trips, so, you know, it's funny you talking about having a coast coast trip. There's a guy in Texas who put together a trip, and they wanted to come to Canada. And I was going to show them the Underground Railroad and all oh, those things are here. Yeah. You know, Uncle Tom's Town Cabin is here. Under, oh, yeah. all, all, all those things from the slaves get, escaped from America to come to Canada. It is true. Oh, yeah. I was putting together for them, but COVID kind of screwed it up. They can come right up to Toronto and visit us, hang out, have a few beers, a few laughs, 
because you know that's exactly what we did here. We call it American history. That type of history is needed. There's so many youngsters don't even know nothing about that the underground river. I, a matter of fact, um, I wonder about looking at the the, the, the wives of uh, they had these uh, wild basketball wives of Atlanta and that type of stuff. They had this one chick on there. Say her grandfather was the civil rights leader or something like that. And she was saying, they asked about the Underground Railroad. She thought it was really a train going up on <laughs> there. And she was on national TV saying, yeah, but he used to ride the train on there. It wasn't a train. It was, <laughs> but I mean, you know, people need, I said that to say, a lot of young people need, they need to know their history. They need to know about what's going on. You want to say, yeah, I'm black and I'm proud, you know. Why well, are you proud? They don't, they, don't, they don't even know what that means. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. That, 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 that mean, you know, it, it's two things I always say this. Being, being proud to be black is not anti-anything. You're not anti anything. You're supposed to love what you see in the mirror. You know, some people say, I don't want to say that because at work and people going to, it's not anti anything because you like the, what the hell you look at me. I got friends from all different cultures, everywhere from yeah. Persian to Italian to Greek to Jewish to this and that. And they all love their heritage. And yeah. the thing is, here is, and my club is this too. When I asked somebody, I said, I asked it because, you know, in Canada, we have a guy, a lot of guys in mixed race, mixed race. Yeah. I don't care how much milk you're pouring coffee, is coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the thing, if you don't know who you are, you know, then you really can't roll with me because I know exactly what I am, you know. Yeah, I'm a black yeah, yeah. man who loves my family. I have two grown sons I love very much. And they, I hope to be a grandfather one day. I really would like that. I got yeah. some of the best friends, the best men I've ever met is in my club. I got some beautiful, amazing, nice young men in my club. One of the guys yeah. is getting married. And uh, he's the only one. A lot of guys are divorced. A lot of guys are married. And yeah. you know, the principles we live here is when families come first. I say, if you can't show up to a club meeting yeah. with your family, yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Your family and your job come first. I, I, unfortunately, we come third because without that job, you can't take care of your family. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. I want to I thank you two fine young gentlemen and for coming on this show. And well, maybe, maybe, maybe two or three times a year, I'd like to bring you on again. You know, Paul, oh, I'm always in your ear, but you, I, my, my friend, you, you're such a smart man. And um, I remember being at the beach, Landon, and you, I talked to you early in the morning. You told me, oh, yeah. you told me that uh, Toby had passed me. Me. It, killed, it killed me. It killed me. That killed my whole week. When you told me that, I was like, God damn, what? Like, I had this plan to go to the beach. I was at the beach, got my bike ready. I'm looking at it, I got yeah. whiskey, and you told me that. And it's like, you just ruined my whole, you ruined the whole thing. <laughs> But you know, so yeah. you reached out to me and told me that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, my okay, brothers. I'm gonna let you guys go. And it was so amazing talking to you and having a conversation about bikes. Oh, we enjoyed it. We and, enjoyed and, it. We really enjoyed it. And yeah. Paul, yeah. Paul and Paul Hop, I want your number. So we're gonna talk about that later. I need to get your number from from um, Paul if that's possible. All right. Love I, to I'll talk. Get it to you. All right, brothers. We'll yeah. talk to you guys later. All, All right. right. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye. Thank you so much for these guys. These guys were amazing. Uh, my name is Chrome, and uh, and this is Prospect Magazine. It's really funny because you know these men are something else. They're they're like you know they're. And I, I just and I'm lost for words for talking to them because, the, you know, if you don't know who the East Bay Dragons is, then you know don't wear a patch because you know these men are amazing. They've been around for 61 years. They're a pillar in the community. And if you have a motorcycle club, you know, try to do the same thing. We all try to do so. I'm trying to do it here in Canada the best I can. And uh, these, these, these guys are the prototype. You know, 11 years ago, I started a motorcycle club called the Lost, Lost Gypsies Nation MC. And I had to find something. I had to find something to pattern myself after. I had to, I needed a blueprint. And what we found was they living in Canada and being black men here and no other clubs here to join. I had to find a blueprint and I found they were the best ones. Everything he just said about Paul Butler said about Toby Jean is everything that I try to talk to and share with the men in my club. I'm a little older than everybody and I try to get an advice and I try to keep, I started this thing to give these black men something to do. And what we do is this, I got some, I got some amazing men in this club and we, what we try to do is the same thing. You know, like, you know, I always tell these single moms, they got young kids, they want to drop them off at that clubhouse. We put them to work and try to form, inspire them, teach them about some motorcycles and just teach them to be good parents and take care of their mom and their sisters. That's what we try to do here. I want to thank the East Bay Dragons again for being who they are. They're an amazing group of men. And um, and if you see them, if you get a chance to go up to Oakland and go to their clubhouse, I'd say everybody should stop by and check them out. My name is Chrome. This is Prospect Magazine TV. Wear your mask and good night. Thank you. <laughs>